Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again. It's Wednesday. Uh, we got a couple things to talk about today. We want to get right into it. Um, first of all, last week we did the, the, the trouble light. Actually, we did it on uh, Monday about the trouble lights. And um, uh, a good question came up from a friend of mine uh, by the name of Ben. You know him as Ben Mall, his uh, channel. And, and Ben was asking a little bit of, about his extension cord. And I said, you know, that's a great topic to cover because, you know, a lot of people and I've, d I've done some studying on extension cords and I've been using them in this house because we don't have, you know, it's an old house, didn't have a lot of outlets. Let's talk real quick about extension cords before we get to today's project. Now, when we think of the word extension cord, the first kind of thing that comes to my mind always has been, this is your typical old fashioned indoor homeowner extension cord. These cords were made to uh, to extend, go from an outlet maybe to a lamp or things like that. Uh, and, and the lamps used uh, one or two light bulbs, so you weren't running anything that really had a lot of uh, current draw to it. Uh, maybe 60 watts, you were running two 60 watt bulbs. So um, whenever you look at an extension cord like this, if you look real closely on, there is lettering on the cord here. And you could see it. I'll zoom in on it. But you could see that it will say this is a, a 16 gauge wire and uh, they're both 16 gauge and they're uh, a decent extension cord. One thing you should always look for anytime you can is you see that little UL tag underwriters laboratories. Whenever you see UL, you know, it's it's the legit item. So always look for UL whenever you can. Um, However, like I said, these were indoors. These you got to be very careful of uh, for different reasons we'll get into later on how you run these and wh what you run them under and things like that. Now, next up, we have your traditional outdoor cords that were very common, you know, very familiar with. These are the ones you might use outside for your weed whacker or, or maybe a hedge trimmer or something like that. Um, these also, if you, uh, they usually have imprinted. If you look on here closely, you'll see that it is imprinted and it'll say like this one here says 15 AWG. AWG stands for American Wire Gauge, and that's the kind of the standard that they go by. But uh, you could see this is the same thickness cord as those first two extension cords I shown. But you might think, well, this is a heavier duty extension cord because it's wrapped a little bit differently. But it's the same wire gauge. So, um, and then it usually tells you like this is good for 300 volts. Uh, so you shouldn't be running more than that through this type of cord. And usually if you look on every cord, it is printed on there. You just got to look closely. You will see it. It is printed. It tells you what type it is, what type of cord is inside. By law, they have to have that. However, since the 80s, uh, probably even before then, uh, there's been a lot of cord manufacturers that come out and they'll make the outer jacket of the cord look thicker. And uh, so you assume that the cord is a stronger or a higher amperage cord and when it really isn't. Now here is an extension cord I found in the garbage, but I thought I would use it because even though you could see here somebody tried to uh, do a quick splice on it, um, twice actually and if you probably there might even be more but uh this is always good that you can make a short extension cord from so even though it might have it might not be good for a long extension cord anymore you can make a couple of short ones the wire is always good for certain lengths so that's why I now when this. i was younger i would make up my own extension cords when i would come across a good piece of you know if you found a good piece of wire like this and or you came across a cheap and uh this is a, a heavier gauge wire and then you would just uh, buy the plug put the plug on the end and then I would put a, a gang box on the other side just uh, you know a regular outlet you could put two or four uh, outlet now this isn't weatherproof or anything but this was great for in the shop because uh, it would allow you to just have that extra 10 feet of length plug it in you had two plugs it worked now, the out two well. considerations you have to make when you're going to pick your extension cord is what kind of appliance you're going to run and how long the run is going to be if you have to go 50 feet 100 feet or whatever now if you're running something like a string of christmas lights they're very low draw very low current especially if they're leds uh you can get by with this uh 16 gauge 
uh, wire because it uh, it will not draw a lot and it don't use a lot of electricity. Now, uh, if you're running a weed whacker, leaf blower, uh, hedge trimmer, things like that, you need something heavier duty. You might want to go with this 14 gauge. Now, uh, remember, as the gauges go lower, the wire gets thicker. So that means that a 14 gauge is going to be uh, th a thicker wire, as you can see at the end here. This is the one we cut to uh, make. You can see this wire is going to be much thicker than the uh, 16 gauge. And even and the 16 is going to be thicker than the 18 gauge. So it's, it's opposite of what you might think. Now, here's the interesting part. You always have to think of any kind of electrical cord, anything that runs electrical in it as it's running current and they call it current for a reason because it acts just like water does now you know that if you had a large hose how easy that water can go through a large hose but the smaller hose you get the more restrictive it is and that's the same thing with wire and electrons you got to remember there's millions of electrons running up and down that wire if you don't have enough wire it tends to overheat another thing that's really important a lot of people don't realize is that a wire just like a garden hose if you were running a garden hose and you had a kink in it what would happen you know you get restriction here and this would happen in in a wires case of it would wind up getting hot in uh, water's case it tends to just to slow everything down which is the same thing it does with the electrons so always think of it like a garden hose so that's why when you have your extension cords you should always try and keep them in a rounded position like this try to avoid any sharp ends and don't have anything heavy on your extension cord because believe it or not pressure also stops just like it would with the water it also stops or, or slows down the electrons so if you have and a lot of this has happened a lot of times but if you have a couch or something that's pinching an electric uh, an extension cord if somebody happens to move the couch and they put it on top of an extension cord that creates a uh, a restriction and that's a lot of times where you have your now, problem there are usually two indicators that your extension cord isn't uh isn't heavy duty enough or or large enough for the project you're using the first one is you'll notice bogging down of uh of your particular appliance if you're using a table saw or something with a long extension cord you'll try and cut a piece of wood and you'll see it just doesn't have the power because there's not enough flow like the current it's not allowing enough current to flow through that cord now the second thing you might notice is that the cord gets hot that's where ben was noticing his cord was getting hot another reason that uh, he needs a bigger cord now the one thing is you can it's always better to have more cord than less cord the only problem is if you're using like a hedge trimmer or something you don't want to be carrying around this big you know, 12 gauge, 10 gauge extension cord on a hedge trim. It's just heavy. It's, it's, you know, so you try and get the biggest that you can that makes sense for the job you're using. If you're trying to use a leaf blower on a ladder to clean out your gutters, obviously you don't want a super heavy extension cord because it's going to be bogging you down on that ladder, but you want the biggest one you can get without affecting the performance of the tool you're using. Now, one thing you might want to consider, let's say you're doing workout, uh, you're working on a garage. Okay, you're doing some work on the garage. You have no electricity in the garage and you're running it from your house to the garage to do some work And maybe there's going to be two of you out there, you know, using a, maybe a, a drill and maybe a, a, ha a trouble light or a drop light <laughs> Uh, so my, you might say, okay, I'm going to run my a regular cord out there and then I'm going to put a, uh, a splitter on here. You know, you're going to put this into there and that'll give you three outlets at the end. And then from there, you'll let the guy run the drill. Now you always got to remember everything's got to be added up if you're using it at the same time. But what's a really good idea and what they use on construction sites is something called a gang box. Now, I made these up a while ago uh, because whenever I'm going to do work in the yard or something, I run this from my outlet on my porch out to the yard and then this is the gang box that i'll run the saw off of or whatever you know and i'll keep it close to here so what you're doing is this is a heavy duty cord this is 12 3 it's very heavy duty you know almost like what you're running inside your house so you plug this into your outlet now you can plug into here 
And, you know, you can even run an extension cord from here, a shorter one, maybe 25 foot if you had to. But you see, here's you got your heavy duty cord and then eventually going down to smaller cords. You wouldn't want to reverse it. You don't want to have a small cord then going into this because, you know, it's already being restricted. You want the, you know, to branch off just like a tree branch would. You want it to be large going into smaller. But uh, gang box is always a good idea. When you're at a job, so you're going to be working there for a while, run this heavy duty cord and then from this feed off to smaller ones and you don't have to go as long. Then. Another thing is it's always good to have multiple cords around your house. Try and have a 20 foot cord, a 50 foot cord, a 100 foot cord. No sense in using a 100 foot cord when you're only 10 foot away that you only need a 10 foot cord, you know, because now again, those electrons are going to have to travel through all that cord before it gets to your appliance. And some appliances can, can suffer damage from voltage drop. Meaning if you run too long an extension cord and the appliance isn't getting the proper voltage, it could actually run hot. It will run hotter and sometimes damage it. So, uh, always, and another thing, one last thing I want to point out is that, you can't always trust, you have to, that's why I tell you to look for UL or, uh, you know, they have another one, ETL, but the UL is the one you can really trust. And, and that's because a lot of these cords, you know, uh, they come from China and, and China has a lot of uh, deception uh, in some of their dealers. And, you know, you might buy something, you say, okay, this is good. This is a, you know, 14 gauge or whatever. When you cut the the cord and you look at it, you see the wires are real thin or the, the it's uh, uh, wires aren't really uh, in decent shape or the wires are made of an inferior uh, component like, you know, copper coated wire. So you got to be very careful with some of these uh, extension cords and, and a good, a good, you know, we always say you kind of get what you pay for. So if you find a 50 foot extension cord for $10, uh, there's usually a reason that it's ten dollars. You know, something is missing in that cord. So, you know, buy the best one you can get. And if ever you, this is great to buy it. Like if you go to yard sales, tag sales, things like that. My buddy Brian O'Hare, he buys extension cords whenever he goes, and he gets good ones because, you know, they they go cheap there. But uh, don't don't chimp out on the. Uh, on the extension cord, get the best one you can. It's always good, especially if you're running something that's uh, a little bit further, like Ben is running, you know, his uh, uh, leaf blower, and it, it uses a little bit more electricity. He just, uh, you know, look for a decent cord and uh, buy once, cry once. Okay, one last thing. They also say that extension cords, believe it or not, have a lifespan. It's not printed on there like a milk container, but they say that extension cords do not last forever. And a lot of times with between the curling and the wrapping and the fraying, the uh, the wires, they do get uh, kinked and bent inside that jacket. You can't really expect it too well. And, and again, a hot cord is a good indication that you have some kind of flow problems. Uh, also, if you have to repair the cord, like that one extension cord I have, if you don't do the pair, repair uh, correctly, that can give you an issue too, you know, it would stop the flow of electrons, you know, so it's, uh, always think of it like that garden hose, pretty cool. Next up, uh, for today's project, I have a little, uh, <laughs> steampunk lamp I want to talk about. Okay, a couple months ago, I happened to be up late at night, and I'm scrolling through, and I see this advertised, and it wasn't cheap, it's like 40-something dollars, and I said, you know, it's a kind of steampunk lamp, uses one of those, a cage light, right, and I was like, wow. And I said, you know what? I always wanted one of these. I'm going to buy it. Let me show you what it looks like lit up. You can see here. It's got the little flame bulbs coming out. It's got, uh, let me see if I can dim it down a little bit. It's got, um, you know, the decay. It, I just liked it, right? But I said, wow, this would be cool. Because I said, if for me to build this thing would cost over $40 because the explosion proof lamp, the, uh, the, the pipe nipples and everything. So I, you know, I said, Okay, I said, I'll go for it. And I, you know, I did it. And it took about a month to get here. Don't you know, darn China. Darn you, China! <laughs> I get it home, and it's plastic. Yeah, it's plastic. It's, uh, I can't tell you how light this is. It's light as a feather because it's all plastic. I thought... <laughs> because the pictures did not... The pictures did not show any seams or anything. It looked... If I showed you the picture, you would say, oh, that's definitely metal. But it wasn't. So... I said, I was all upset, but uh, I said, you know what? I'm going to make my own. I'm going to make my own. So I scrounged up some parts that I had laying around, other parts that I picked up inexpensive. You can see I got the explode. This is a real one, metal, you know. 
and uh, we're gonna hook this up see if we can't make our own and this way uh, has a little bit more industrial look I won't paint it yet but I just want to get it together the one problem I notice is that these sockets go into here okay you know the little exhaust ports <laughs> well the one thing I noticed that the the socket really doesn't fit uh, right into here I'll show you what I mean it's just a little bit tight so what I'm going to have to do is obviously cut off this little bracket here and uh, grind this down a little bit on the belt sander so that fits in there right. And I also have some silicone uh, RTV to uh, to hold that in there because I could use JB Weld, but I don't want I want it to have, you know the silicone seems like the right uh, the black silicone will be seem like it will insulate it and also give it a nice uh, connection. So. Let's uh, get these to fit. Okay, in the first, first thing we did was we cut off this little, uh, this is here that attaches to a, a threaded tube that if you wanted to put inside a lamp or something, we're not using that. So we cut that off. Okay, now we uh, ground this down with the belt sand. You can see we just took it a little bit off to make it a little bit more uh, able to fit in here. And you can see what happens. Now we have a, a good fit that'll go all the way into here. And we'll straighten that out with the RTV. But... That's kind of the, the look we want, but we have to make sure that this goes in and it's straight because you don't want that bulb being cocked when it comes out of there. But uh, the RTV will hold it and then it will clamp. Now to power this light, here is a cord I found while I was uh, on one of my walks and uh, it was off an old vacuum cleaner. And you can see here the vacuum ran over the wire a couple times. You can see here somebody, you know, because it abraded the, the jacket. And somebody did a quick, you know, tape over whatever. But the uh, the reason I cut this off and took it is because from the plug section to about 15 feet, it's unscathed. So you can see here, I got 15 feet of cord that I'll cut and that'll be enough for this lamp. And the rest of this is just extra wire. Now here's a perfect example of why you don't judge a book by its cover when it comes to cords. Now you look at this cord and it came off of a vacuum or that type of its appliance. You say, well, that's a, you know, a good cord. It's got some good, uh, but it is 17 gauge. You could see, which is an unusual gauge, but look how thin that wire is. Now that's fine for this lamp because we're tops using 30 watts or whatever, you know, and you can't plug anything else into it. So this would be fine for this lamp. But you see, if you grab this cord thinking that, hey, uh, you know, this would make a good extension cord. It really wouldn't because, you you know, you're kind of limited. You see how thin that wire is. And we're calling this project done. Uh... It's now 10.30. I have to post this video tonight for it to be ready for tomorrow. So I made it under the deadline. What do you think? Um, uh, you know, this is a real one now. This is not plastic. There's nothing uh, plastic about it. And I think it looks really good. I'm, I'm really happy with it. Uh, let me show you what it looks like. <clears throat> of course, lit up. Uh, that's the best part here. There we go. You can see these flame bulbs here. Now, it really doesn't do it justice too much because it's so bright in here. Let me kill some of the the lighting and uh, give you a better view of it. It's really, this is like the cat's pajamas. I don't know what it is about these uh, type of steampunk lamps. Pardon the shaking, but uh, you can see here the, the flames. And I'm still trying to dim it out. It's hard to dim out. But, uh, yep, that's it. Just love this thing. So this will go upstairs and the plastic one, I don't know, I wasn't too crazy about that plastic, you know, it just bothered me. Even though you can't really tell from 10 feet away, you know? So in closing, this is one of those projects that looks so much better in person than they do on film. Again, because the uh, camera gets blown out by the lights, you can't really see that vintage style multi-filament light bulb too well, but I tried my best to get some footage of it for you and I hope you enjoyed this project. Have a nice day, take care now, bye-bye.